If packing makes you wanna set your hair on fire, this video is for you because I'm gonna be sharing all my best tips for packing to ensure that you have the most stress-free experience possible, especially if you're gonna be traveling to Europe. So here's my promise to you. By the end of this video, you are going to be a total packing pro. And be sure to stick around until the end because I'm also gonna be sharing a bunch of really cool travel hacks and I'm gonna be giving you a chance to win a postcard. So without further ado, please hit that cheesy intro. What's up, Smarties? Today we are tackling a not so sexy topic, but an important one, which is packing. So if you're new around here, my name is Christina from happytowander.com, and this channel is all about how to travel Europe smarter, cheaper, and more off the beaten path. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you wanna win a postcard from me, be sure to comment below with your favorite tip, and I'll be randomly drawing a winner and announcing them in next week's video. Now let's get to tip number one, which is to always start with a packing list. Now I know this is a total mom tip, but there's a reason that moms are always right. I highly recommend before you pack to print out a packing list. Don't worry, as your fairy travel mother, I've already created some printable lists for you, but it's really important to have this to make sure you don't leave anything important behind. One thing I always do as well is I create a special hardcore essentials travel list on my phone so that in the morning before my flight, I can just review it and make sure I have all those really important things like passport, my hair straightener, sorry, I'm kind of vain, um, any medication, etc. Tip number two is to know your airline's baggage fee policy. Now, I know this seems like common sense, but actually for a lot of first timers to Europe, they don't realize just how inconsistent and random some of these European airlines can be. So really baggage allowance depends on the airline that you're flying with. So just to save yourself the hassle, be sure to Google in advance how much you're allowed to bring in terms of size and also in terms of weight. One really good thing you can also invest in that's dirt cheap that you can just get off of Amazon is also a handheld luggage scale. That way you can weigh your luggage in advance so you don't have to pay any baggage fees um, at the airport or be that person who's awkwardly reshuffling everything at the front of the line. Tip number three is to bring the right bag. Of course, this completely depends and the perfect bag is really, really subjective. But what I mean by the perfect bag is a bag that's well suited for your travel style. So for me personally, my travel style is I've kind of outgrown my backpacking days. So I do a lot of city breaks. I typically travel carry on only and I like to stay in like mid range hotels. And so for me, the perfect bag is just a hard shell suitcase, carry on size, something that I can carry easily by myself. Of course, if you are backpacking, um, doing some kind of adventure travel or maybe traveling with a family where you need more than one bag you're gonna have different needs and different bags that you bring with you but what's really important is that you just pick something that's really comfortable something that you've tested and something that you're able to carry because a lot of the time um, you know some hotels will only have stairs no elevator or elevators will be broken so whatever bag you bring make sure you can actually physically pick it up and if you want to learn how to pack a little bit lighter so that you are able to carry your bags I have a full video on that coming up next week so be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss it. Tip number four is to use packing cubes. I absolutely love packing cubes. They are probably like my favorite travel product. Um, I first started using them five years ago on my first backpacking trip and I haven't looked back. They're really great for keeping your suitcase organized and for kind of compressing your different goods. I personally use a different packing cube for like different types of clothing. So one for bottoms, one for tops, one for underwear and socks. But some other people actually use little packing cubes to organize individual outfits for each day, which is quite clever as well. So there's a lot of versatility there. Packing cubes are the best. Tip number five is to roll your clothes. Seriously, if you're not rolling your clothes already, do it, it is such a game changer. Now the jury is still out about whether it actually saves space or if it actually reduces wrinkles. But what I like about rolling is you can at a glance see the different items that you have in your suitcase, which is really convenient if you're looking for a specific item or if you just wanna kinda gaze lovingly at how organized your suitcase looks. Now one particular rolling technique that is great if you're feeling really crafty is something called the ranger roll. Um, and this is basically where you roll up your clothes and tuck them into little burritos. Um, that can actually help compress and save more space as well. But personally, I'm a little bit lazy and I've always just kind of rolled it um, and I've had no troubles. So be sure to give rolling your clothes a try. Tip number six is to invest in protective wraps for your fragile goods. So this is more of a tip if you travel with a lot of gear like I do, like with cameras, gimbals, etc. But really, if you have anything fragile that you tend to travel with, um, like perfume bottles, or if you intend to travel 
and buy something fragile like mugs, love a good mug, um, then be sure to invest in some of these protective travel wraps, which look like this. So I actually have two, one from Domkey, which is a really well-regarded brand. It's great, but I also have a much cheaper Amazon brand version and it does the exact same thing. Basically, they're just these Velcro wraps that are padded so you can wrap them around different objects like cameras or like a gimbal um, and turn any bag of yours into a camera bag, which I think is really handy because I can just like put my DSLR in there and then like throw it in my backpack and not worry about it. Theoretically, you could use a fluffy scarf to kind of achieve the same effect, but I personally really like like um, having these because they look quite smart and they're very versatile and not that expensive. So be sure to check those out. By the way, every item that I'm mentioning or recommending, um, you're gonna be able to find the link in the description down below. So be sure to check that out if you're curious about any of these things that I'm talking about. Tip number seven is to plan your outfits. Now I know this is a little bit of extra work, but if you plan your outfits in advance, then you can make sure you're only bringing things that you're actually gonna wear. Uh, the last thing you wanna do is bring things just in case or just throw random items in your bag because when push comes to shove and you're trying to dress yourself in the morning, you probably won't be able to find that many combinations that look good and you're gonna hate that you brought like those weird pattern pants that you never wear. So be sure to plan your outfits in advance to ensure you kind of streamline your vacation wardrobe and just pack the essentials. Tip number eight is to DIY your own travel size toiletries. So I know a lot of the time when people travel abroad, they like to buy those cute little travel size toiletries from the supermarket that are like one or two bucks a pop. Um, but for me personally, I mean, you know, it's not expensive, but it's not really the best use of money because you're kind of confined to just those specific products. And if you're anything like me, you need like a special shampoo, special face cleanser, all that stuff. So what I would recommend actually, if you travel quite often is to just purchase these kind of reusable um, toiletry bottles that you can fill with your own favorite products. And that way, you know, you can make your own travel size things. You don't need to buy these little bottles anymore, cutting down on the single use plastic and all that. So I highly recommend getting some bottles like this because they're really, really great. Onwards to tip number eight, which is to keep all your liquids in their own little reusable plastic bag and to keep them apart from everything else. So um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, when you're going through airport security, if you have liquids in your carry-on, you tend to have to bring them out, separate them so that they can in inspect them. And a lot of the time, what they want you to do is they want you to use those like, you know, dinky little single-use Ziploc bags. But if you travel really often, it's really worth it to make the jump to splurge on a bag like this, a reusable plastic bag that you can chuck all your toiletries in, something that's clear and TSA approved. Um, and that way you don't need to use those plastic bags that come at the airport. And this is also a lot sturdier and you can just like, like whip it out of your bag and put it on the security belt like a pro. I will say 95% of the time I've had no trouble with this exact bag, but there are some airports that can kind of weird about it. And so in Paris and London, I've had instances where they've insisted that I use their plastic bags. In those cases, just do it, but it's really, really good to have a bag like this just to hold your toiletries and to reuse time and time again. Tip number nine is to use some kind of special covering on your liquid bottles to ensure that you are protected against leaks. Oftentimes this tip is given with um, plastic wrap, so people recommend that you put plastic wrap um, over top your bottle and then screw the cap over top. Um, you could do that, but also if you're like me and have like a million plastic bags just sitting under the sink, um, I recommend just cutting those up into little squares and then using those instead. That way you're just kind of upcycling that waste that would just be sitting under your sink. Tip number 10 is to always pack your absolute essentials in your carry-on as well as an additional outfit. Because here's the thing, bags can go missing. They don't go missing often, but they can. And so the last thing you want is to have like your essential medication or like your favorite foundation sitting in your suitcase when you really, really need it. So make sure you always have everything, your absolute essentials packed in your carry-on, as well as an additional outfit, especially with extra underwear, just in case. On that note, tip number 11 is if you happen to be traveling with someone else, be sure to store some of your clothes or outfits in your travel buddy suitcase and vice versa. So that way, if one person's suitcase goes missing, then at least you'll have additional clothes. So tip number 12 is to be sure to bring some extra bags. So like totes, Ziploc bags, etc., because you never know when you'll need them. And trust me on this one, you can never have too many bags. Totes come in really handy for stowing things like dirty clothes or even just for shopping in markets when you're abroad. So be sure to bring some extra bags. Um, you never know when you'll need them and they weigh nothing. So you might as well bring a few. Very related to this is tip number 13, um, which at the very least, if you don't plan on bringing any extra totes or bags or anything, 
thing, be sure to have a bag for dirty laundry because the last thing you want is to be mixing all your clean clothes with all your icky, sweaty, you know, gross clothes. Um, that's something that a lot of people forget. So be sure to bring an additional bag for dirty laundry. Tip number 14 is to make sure you have a unique luggage tag or identifier on your suitcase. Of course, this is especially true if you're gonna be checking in your bag um, because trust me, people can and they do take the wrong bag all the time. What my parents used to do actually is they used to wrap their luggage in this obnoxious rainbow ribbon and obviously it doesn't look that smart but people will not take it because they know that thing isn't theirs. So make sure your luggage is unique to avoid anybody accidentally taking it at the airport. Tip 15 is to make sure you're always packing your heaviest stuff at the bottom of your suitcase so kind of where the wheels are because the last thing you want is a top heavy bag especially if it's a backpack because that'll really like make you feel imbalanced and also you don't want your suitcase to be toppling over at the airport either. So be sure to pack the heaviest things at the very bottom. Tip 16 is to remember to pack layers for warmth. So this is the thing about Europe and I think I can generalize this across the continent. The weather is completely whack. Like it might be sunny um, and then all of a sudden a storm cloud will just roll in and soak you completely wet. Looking at you England. So remember, remember to always bring different layers so that you can have a lot of different items that are sort of multi-purpose and you're not just, you know, carrying around one bulky sweater that's only good for one type of weather. This is definitely one of my top tips for packing light. And again, if you're interested in that topic, be sure to subscribe because next week's video is all about that. Tip number 17, make sure you bring a reusable water bottle. Um, so the good thing about reusable water bottles is when you're traveling around Europe, most major cities will have free fountains in the streets where you can get tap water for free, which is great because it is better for the environment and also it saves you quite a bit of money. In addition to that, a lot of major airlines now will just pour any um, water that you want on the flight directly into, you know, into your bottle, which is great because less plastic cups. And for the last tip before we move on to the cool packing hacks that I've got for you, be sure to leave a little extra space in your suitcase because I mean, we're human. You can expect that you're gonna find something abroad that you're gonna really wanna buy. And so instead of just agonizing over what of your things you should throw away, um, be sure to leave a little extra space on the way there or alternatively consider bringing like a duffel bag or a tote bag that folds up really small and bringing that with you so that you have an additional bag on the way home. An advanced mega Asian parent technique that I learned for my parents is also to just nest your suitcases. So you can consider taking a small suitcase, putting all your stuff in it, and then packing it within a slightly larger suitcase. And that way on the way back, you only have to pay luggage fees one way, and then you have two suitcases to fill with glorious crap. Now let's move on to some cool travel hacks. So these are like little ingenious tricks that you can use to make packing a little bit more fun and a little bit easier. So hack number one, actually let's say tip number 19 for consistency is to bring a pillowcase. So pillowcases are a really good thing to bring with you because A, they weigh nothing and B, they're really multifunctional. So you could, for example, stuff a pillowcase with clothes or like a soft jacket in order to create a DIY travel pillow. Um, it's also more hygienic if you're staying in hostels or like an apartment where you feel like the cleanliness isn't really there. Um, and it's also just really nice and comfortable to have something from home. Worst comes to worst, if you pack a pillowcase and you don't feel like you're using it for any of those aforementioned purposes, you can always just use it as a dirty laundry bag. Next hack, tip number 20, be sure to bring a clothespin or a money clip or binder clip because you can actually use it to create a DIY toothbrush stand so that way you can make sure your toothbrush is never touching the counter or anything gross. Tip 21 is to use a Tic Tac case to hold your bobby pin. That's right, after you eat all these Tic Tacs, you can actually use the empty box to store those bobby pins that can get misplaced or you know just lost really, really easily. I hate bobby pins, they are the bane of my existence. But if you use them, this is a great storage container for them. Tip 22, in a similar way, if you travel with a lot of different hair ties, you can actually use a little carabiner to store your hair ties and keep them all organized on one clip. That way you don't have to like have a million on your wrist like I always do. <laughs> Tip number 23 is to keep your pill bottles because they're actually really handy for storing Q-tips. Gotta have those clean ears. Tip 24 is to string your necklaces through a straw to ensure that they don't get tangled. I personally don't have a huge problem with my necklaces getting tangled. I tend to just carry them in a pouch, but if you have little fragile necklaces that get tangled very often, stringing them through a straw will solve that problem. Tip 25, use a shower cap to store your dirty shoes. Now, remember, this is not a shower cap that you are going to be using on your trip. This is just an old shower cap that you have lying around or one that you're never gonna use because 
I personally don't really use shower caps, um, but remember shoes can get really muddy, really dirty. So the last thing you want is to be throwing your dirty shoes on top of all your clothes. Alternatively, if you have any of those plastic bags that bed sheets come in, those would also work really well for this purpose. Tip 26, to maximize space, consider stuffing little small items in your shoes. Um, so things like socks or underwear, just remember to put those things in a protective bag first so that your like underwear is not directly in your shoe, which I think is kind of gross and sounds like infection city. Tip 27 is to invest in a universal adapter. Yes, they do exist and they're really, really handy, especially the ones that you can buy now that have multiple USB cord slots, um, and that will allow you to charge multiple devices without bringing a bulky power bar. So a universal adapter is really good to have, um, even for Europe, because even though most countries use the same two-prong plugs, um, there are certain exceptions like the UK, Ireland, and Malta that use a different one. So it's really good to just have a universal one just in case. Plus, once you buy a good one that lasts, then you can literally use it for every trip that you have from that point forward. So it's a really good investment. Tip 28 is to bring an oven mitt. I know that seems a little bit weird, but this is actually really handy if you travel with any heat appliances like curling irons or flat irons like I do. Um, it always drives my boyfriend insane because I literally just like throw a hot straightener into my suitcase and it really scares him because Nobody likes fire. So if you want a heat proof way to carry those things around, bring an oven mitt and then you can just insert it and then wrap the cord around and you're set. Tip 29, bring a few dryer sheets with you to avoid weird clothes smell. So if you're traveling for quite a long time, it might be worth your while to bring just a few dryer sheets so that your clothes stay fresh. If you've traveled for an extended period of time, I'm sure you are familiar with that weird mildewy clothing smell um, that clothes tend to get if they've been in a suitcase for a long time. So dryer sheets are a really good way of keeping that at bay. So tip number 30 is to bring a frozen water bottle or a frozen sponge to keep your snacks cold. So as I'm sure you know, security is pretty strict on bringing any liquids over a hundred milliliters through security. Um, but one way to bypass this is to just bring a frozen water bottle if you don't wanna bring a reusable one or to freeze a sponge and use it kind of like an ice pack so that you can keep any snacks that you bring cold. Last but not least, my bonus tip for you is to always bring a pen. I know that this is not necessarily a travel hack, but it's just something that everybody forgets to do. So make sure you have a pen in at least every bag you're bringing. So like your suitcase, your backpack, your purse, whatever, because sometimes you'll need a pen. And trust me, when you need it the most, it will not be there. So make sure you bring a pen. It's really important if you need to fill out any customs declarations or really just for daily use. All right, Smarties, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more Europe videos just like this one. And if you want to win that free postcard I was talking about, just comment below with your favorite tip from this video and be sure to check out the description for my free packing list and for all the items that I mentioned. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week.